Hi, I'm Cindy Grisdella, author of Artful Improv. Artful Improv is all about inspiring you and helping you to move forward on your own artistic journey. Um, it's a friendly guide to help you move forward with choosing your fabrics, organizing your scraps, um, simple elements of design to help you while you're creating, and um, elements that you can use to create your own unique improv quilt. And if you're a more experienced quilter, I hope that there'll be some tips in the book that you can use to make your next quilt, your next improv quilt better. Um, I, you start, I always start with the color. And I have scraps uh, on my cutting table in baskets like this one. Uh, some of them are, are strips, some of them are chunks, some of them are um, strips that are left over from another project. Sometimes those strips are exactly the spark that you need to make your block sing. I'd like to talk today about creating an improv block. That's one of my favorite uh, parts of the process. So you might want to, an improv block is uh, one that is a log cabin style, but not, um, but a little more wonky. So you can do it in a, in a warm color scheme, an anything goes color scheme, or maybe a more neutral option. Today I'm going to use a warm color scheme. I always start from the uh, center uh, log cabin style and I cut a rough square. Um, I don't use a ruler, I don't, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, this is improv, it's supposed to be fun. And so we have this, uh, this square to start. I always try to keep a line uh, that at an angle to make the block more interesting. If you like yours more square, then absolutely go for it. It's improv, it's supposed to be fun. Uh, you take your center square and then you pick another, another uh, fabric that goes with it. Um, usually I try to choose a different color or value and I'd sew it onto the, um, onto the original square like so and then press it out. You'll see that the edges are um, overlap a little bit. I don't worry about squaring things up um, every, every uh, strip that I add. I just trim the edge, the next edge that I'm going to use. So the, um, the next one is an orange strip and you see I've got my uh, red, my brown, my orange. I'm going in the counterclockwise position like, um, like the regular log cabin style, but they're not the same width and they're not the same angles. At this point, it's often uh, a good idea to think about adding another uh, color or value to give your, your um, block a little more interest to make it less predictable. This uh, particular uh, strip has a cream, which is lighter than the rest, and, a, and an uh, olive block that is the complement of the uh, warm red. These, uh, these seams don't have to match. Um, it, it's not an exact process. Again, it's supposed to be fun, so we don't worry about, we don't worry about um, how, how it goes together uh, so much. The other thing is this is a relatively narrow strip, so um, don't worry about there being an exact quarter inch seam. It really doesn't matter. It can be um, a little narrower if that's, all, if that's all you have as long as it just catches both edges together. Next, you'll see that I've offset this, uh, this block just slightly and I cut the, the end at an angle before I add my next my next strip on. Adding, cutting at an angle every now and again helps it to, um, helps the block to be more interesting. You keep adding, adding um, strips in a counterclockwise uh, manner just like you would in uh, the log cabin style. At this point when the block gets to be a little bigger, I like to think about adding a strip of that has some different colors and some different lines. Often uh, these are strips that are left over from angled stripes, uh, another section of the book that I, I always keep the leftover blocks, uh, leftover strips. I sew this on, um, again, not worrying about matching seams or uh, necessarily an exact quarter inch seam allowance. And then I will often take, um, you'll see in the finished block, I have um, added that another strip along this, uh, uh, making a perpendicular line. These lines are more complex and more interesting um, than 
they would be if we, if we just kept adding plain strips all the way around. So I, when I'm finished, when it's the size that I've decided I want it to be, I square up the block and, uh, dis and figure out how I'm going to use it in, a, um, in an overall design. Here are a few small quilts that I have uh, brought as examples to show uh, ideas that you can use to cr use your improv blocks in a small, a small project. Obviously, you can uh, enlarge them to as big as you want them to. Uh, it's an improv process and you get to decide. This one uh, has improv blocks in the center with uh, curved strips, uh, um, curved strips that are creating a border around the, uh, around the outside, forming a frame. This one has an improv block in the center with uh, strips uh, angled strips on the on the outsides and plenty of negative space to show off your machine quilting. Um, this is uh, I also want to remind you that you don't have to always use solids with uh, improv. Uh, sometimes pattern fabrics work work just as well or better if that's what you like. Or you can put the improv blocks in a row and have inset strips, um, you know, separating them again with a lot of negative space for your. Um, machine quilting to show. Um, improv is a no rules, no pattern process. It's a lot of fun and I hope you'll give it a try.